Mihai's granddaughters liked to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aeon Ignatius Raphael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shilaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot when the royal family was ousted and Arugia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess. And I found out later, she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arugian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in a regular force to clean them out. 
For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Operations complete. Stand by at the front. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. The aircraft. A whole squadron. Ready the end to your interceptors. Open fire. We'll do what we can. Transport truck spotted. Not a threat. But feel free to take them out. Leave them to me. You're hitting three locations. Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rub off their ability to respond. Use those empty hands of yours. If you die too fast, you won't even be useful as targets. What are the odds of getting out alive? That's for you to figure out, Spare 7. Any regular aircraft that join later needing any repairs or ammo will fly over the return line. However, you guys do not have that luxury. So, what are we supposed to do? I'm out. Returning duty supply. How are we supposed to work without ammo? I'm heading back. Nice try. A chain reaction. At least stop it from spreading. Trigger, trigger. Fuck it hard. Cut the crap. There's work to do. The vehicles have been taken out. Move on to the next target. You're our official fly swatter now, Trigger. Fox 2. Vehicle down. Attack me. Hey, 
enough. Operation is complete. Head back. The bastards who flew off are going to wish they were never born. You guys get a pass. Damn right. I wouldn't be surprised if we're thrown in solitary too. Hey, who wants to bet who goes into solitary? That's what that gambling nut job would say if he was still here. <laughs> You know, I've received a medal for my ingenuity in finding a use for you cons. But just remember, if you disobey orders, there's a special place in solitary confinement for you. Your so-called right to complain was forfeited the moment you chose to break the law. Okay then, go make yourselves useful. An Ocean Air Force squadron is currently entering Arusian territory for reconnaissance. Due to certain factors, their return route has been changed. The new return route will be through Yinshi Valley, a scenic and rocky karst area. The enemy's radar facilities and anti-aircraft weapons hidden on the mountainside pose a serious threat. Your mission is to destroy them and get our guys out in one piece, even if it puts your own lives in danger. And it is important to remember they will send up interceptors if you're detected. So you will need to choose something useful in a dogfight. The weather won't be on your side, but you're doing this whether you like it or not. Worry about the squadron's return route, not your own. Your mission is to get them back safely, which I think is the perfect punishment for your crimes.
Spare Squadron, this mission needs to be quick. Target radar facilities and AA weaponry. They're set up on a rugged terrain, and there's a lot of cloud cover. You will be near thunderclouds. Man, you guys were born unlucky. Wait, who's the dumbass who came up with this batshit plan? Just obey orders. Air Force Base 444 Squadron, this is Cyclops 1. The Cyclops and Strider Squadrons currently contain seven aircraft. Stand by. We'll be arriving shortly. Missile. Understood. Missile. Missile. All targets destroyed. No complaints here. Missile. Missile. Caution. Bandits Missile. inbound. Here come the UAVs. We might have crossed the line. This one to our friends. Wish we'd use that hole to get home too. Things don't always go perfectly. Champ, he was totally. 
said the enemy had one mean son of a bitch flying for him. Our team had a few Air Force hot dogs, real experienced pilots. But this guy swooped in like a hawk, locked on, and took them all out in the blink of an eye. Reminds me of a story Gramps told me once. He said a little while before he retired from active duty, he saw an enemy fighter wipe out an entire formation right in front of him. It was like seeing how a shark works when it's going after its dinner. This enemy pilot stalked Gramps' pals from below, just like how a shark would. Then one by one, he put the bite on them. Sounds like what happened to our guys today. Kind of surprised so many made it back alive. I bet when they saw what was going on, they broke formation and left their buddies to the shark. Hang on. There's three extra planes here. They're foreigners too. chance to talk to one of the pilots that escaped back here, so I took it. Apparently, two of our planes took the enemy on alone. They covered the Allies so they could retreat. The hell kind of idiot does a thing like that? The last pilot to land back at the base was that scrawny anarchist dude. He always had this dumb grin on his face. Like he didn't give a damn about whatever he did to get thrown in here with the rest of us. Was he the one who went gung-ho? I bought him a drink later. After the usual small talk, I turned the topic around to the mission. 
For an anarchist, he struck me as a bit weird. Nothing like what I expected. He talked a mile a minute and kept going on and on about library books. Not encyclopedias, those cheesy adventure novels you read in high school. Nothing against those. I like a good story myself once in a while. But I wasn't here to talk books. Uh, I remember that day well. Amidst the swirling clouds, a fighter squadron was trying to help its allies reach safety. He's pretty foolish, isn't he? I thought so too. Suddenly, a highly skilled enemy fighter squadron appeared and began picking them off at the edges. One by one, they fell right out of the sky. Although, I guess there was nobody around that was even more foolish to go to their aid then. So you simply watch things unfold from a distance. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought that I'd just go and follow them straight into the enemy squadron like that? After what felt like decades, I finally got to the info I was looking for. He wasn't the guy. He said he was just following his wingman's lead and managed not to die somehow. The hero on this mission was the new guy. The one that killed Harling. <laughs> How did you feel? I'm still kind of shaken up, actually. But you know, I do feel a certain sense of pride, too. He really is foolish, isn't he? Yep, he sure is. I went to the hangar to have myself a closer look at Trigger's plane. I knew that burnt smell. That's what happens when an engine's been driven to its limit. This pilot was a hot dog. From now on, I was going to keep my eye on this idiot. From a distance, though. I didn't want to get too tight with someone who was a better pilot than my dad. Even so, I decided to give this guy's plane a little bit of the old Avril magic touch. He needed all the help he could get. 